Java has lots of fonts to choose from. In a later lesson, I'll be showing you a simple program that you can use to get a complete list of all the fonts available on your system. Right now, I'm just going to use some of the standard fonts that are always installed. The font text class extends the canvas class to construct a window that can be used to display several lines of text in different fonts. Now, fonts are created as Java objects. So, you'll need to name the font class on an import statement so the compiler will be able to find the class when you refer to it. The paint method of this class does nothing more than create a series of font objects and display the string using each one. In each case, the string displayed is a description of the font itself. The new keyword is used to create the font object. A font object must be created for a specific font name. Actually, the name is that of a family of fonts because inside the family, as we'll see, there are fonts of the same name that are different size and have a slightly different appearance. The font constructor requires that you specify one of four possible appearances for the member of the font family that you've selected. The text can be displayed in just plain form or it can be designated as being bold or italic. Now it can be designated as being both bold and italic by specifying both names and placing a vertical bar between them. The vertical bar is the bitwise OR operator and we'll be getting into all of those details a bit later. You must also select the font size. Now this is a bit odd. Every measurement of everything displayed in a Java window is in terms of the number of pixels it takes up on the screen. Fonts, however, are specified as a number of points, and a point is 1 72nd of an inch. So, if you specify a font as being 12, you're saying that you want it to be 12 72nds of an inch. Between you and me, this thing with points is a problem looking for a solution. Java sort of inherited the whole thing from the operating systems on which it runs. The size you specify is actually translated into a number of pixels at some point, and it will change sizes when you change screen resolution, so it really isn't measured as part of an actual inch. I mean, the Java program may have no idea how big your screen is. Anyway, because it's measured in points, you'll find that you have to kind of experiment with the size to get it just the way you want it. Oh well, can't have everything. The draw string method is used to actually display the string. But, if you'll see, the draw string method does not provide a way for you to specify the font. To specify a font, you must put it into a graphics object with a call to set font. The graphics object only holds one font, so you'll need to store a new one there every time you want to use a different font. Not only that, but the graphics object has its own default font already installed, and it won't remember any font that you store into it from one call of paint to the next. This is true because you get a new graphics object every time paint is called. To give you a fair idea of how all this works, this program selects several different fonts in different sizes. Notice this last one. This is to show what happens when you specify a font name that is completely unknown. When you do this, Java makes a new copy of its default font and uses that. This means that when you mess up the name of your font, you don't get any sort of error message. But it also means that Java will display your text even if the font you ask for is not installed. This is part of that portability thing. If you go to run your program on another machine and the font you specified happens not to be installed on that machine, your program will still run. This program runs and displays the text in the various specified fonts. Now, notice this default name for the last line. On this machine, it looks very much like, and probably is, the sans serif font. On another machine, it may be an entirely different font, but it will be the one chosen to be consistent and compatible with the other windows on the system. If you decide you want to write a program that uses the default font on each machine, 
it's kind of tradition to specify the name of the font family as default. Okay, that's about it for fonts and displaying text. We'll soon be creating special fonts for buttons and pull-down lists, which is only a matter of creating a font object and setting it inside the button or the list. In later lessons, we'll be looking at animating text, but that's only a matter of using the standard animation techniques on what we already know about displaying text. The next lesson demonstrates how to display text in different colors.